Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be posted to our um, in our archives for you to watch at your convenience. I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archive shows. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So uh, please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, and uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. Uh, we are the Nebraska Nebraska's State Library. So we provide services to all types of libraries and you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries. Uh, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, um, et cetera, et cetera. Really our only criteria is it's something to do with libraries. We do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. And today it is the last Wednesday of the month, so it is Pretty Sweet Tech Day, yay, with Amanda Sweet, our uh, technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, at the end of every month, the last Wednesday of every month is um, we, um, Amanda comes on and comes us live to talk to us about um, anything tech focused. Uh, so if you are a techie person at your library, this is definitely the uh, show to keep an eye on and sign up for every month. And today we're going to do something that I think sounds really fun. <laughs> um, 3D room design, um, virtual room design, lesson plans, lots of uh, great resources and things that Amanda has put together. So um, I'm going to hand it over to you, Amanda, to take it away and tell us all about how we can do this. All right. So I've got... <laughs> Basically, I'm going to talk about a new um, room design lesson plan that I put together by borrowing some of the University of Nebraska Lincoln's extension curriculum. So I tucked a little bit of that in there and then I adapted some new stuff and added some extra good stuff that I came across across the years. And then, so I'll kind of give you a demonstration of what that lesson plan looks like, what's included, some of the resources <coughs> that are available. And then I'll do a demonstration of Tinkercad, which is one of the easiest ways that you can actually get started across different age groupings with this. And then I'll go over some different tools that you can use if you don't want to use Tinkercad or you want to explore other tools. And then some other cool VR and aug like virtual reality and augmented reality tools that have come in handy in the classroom and just in real professional use if people want to use it at work or to maybe explore some new ideas. And then I'll wrap it all out by talking about some different ways that VR has actually impacted specific industries and point over to specific organizations that are using this stuff instead of just saying, a generic way that it's being used for like aerial mapping. You'll be able to see it in practice. <laughs> well, I cough. Yeah. Right, so first, like a little bit about the lesson plan itself. Um, it's geared toward ages 12 to adult. I'm sure that you could probably use it for a little bit younger audience if they're comfortable using the tools and curious about career exploration. But kind of the main slant of it is to introduce people to kind of old school concepts of room design and then translate it over into how that industry is changing. And they'll look at how they can find um, meaningful careers and interesting employment in the future. And a lot of this is actually happening right now. So even if you are introducing this to like a 40, 50, 60 year old, they'll still be able to get some use out of it. And adults have actually found a lot of this stuff pretty interesting too. And so you can either do, it's in four different modules. So you can either do all of them, you can pick and choose based on what people are interested in, or you can turn it into like a kind of a summer camp that's completed across four to eight sessions. 
and again it is adapted from UNL's uh, design decisions curriculum so there is a little bit of that folded in there and so let me just yeah, I'll mention while you're linking out to what you've got there that um, the uh, the Google Slides that Amanda's using you will have access to after the presentation today too. So um, don't worry about that or trying to scribble down whatever that URL is up there. Um, we'll have a link directly to them when the archive is posted for you. And so this is the lesson plan itself here. So kind of across the top here is in the meaningful work section and as you see more lesson plans coming out along this series um, the responsible consumption product production sustainable cities and communities quality education those terms actually came from the un sustainable development goals they're just kind of problems that are facing anyone anywhere everywhere and when people are helping solve those problems and helping contribute to the greater good they just found out that they that contributes to meaningful work so that's why you see that kind of phrasing and that kind of phrasing that you may not have seen before and for those of you that are more interested in the tech side of it i included a tech that helps section so that this will fold in to show how virtual reality augmented reality software and apps are all helping to contribute to solving these problems up here so it's kind of tying into how tech is actually going out into the real world. And for those of you that are more interested in the career pathways and how people can use this resource to explore <coughs> different careers, including healthcare, as, as it were. But for these are just kind of a little blurb preview for what you're going to be getting into. And the specific one for this one is the interior design, but it can also translate over into a city planner, civil engineer, um, urban planner, community planning, anything where you have to use an element of design to put a space together. And that can include any virtual only environments, like people that are specifically designing for virtual reality. like. Um, gaming or training environments or different things like that and there's a minimal prereq in here so the only thing i recommend is that if people are completely unfamiliar with using these 3d design tools that you might do a mini activity that'll kind of get people warmed up into it but if you don't have any background in 3d design you just want to expect to spend more time in the third module, which is building the prototype. And that is actually the module where you dig into the tools themselves. So there just might be a tiny bit higher of a learning curve. And for the school standards, I'm still actually working with extension to be able to solidify those. I don't want to say that this is actually standards aligned until I, I get like the little green check mark that says that it is but the general rule of thumb is that there are standards alignments that are associated with the original extension curriculum and those alignments will likely translate over to the adaptation but you still need to cross your t's and dot your i's so take it with a grain of salt and so I'm not going to read your enti this entire little introduction for you. Um, I'll give you the gist of it, which is basically that interior designers are, their goal is to design spaces so that they're welcoming, friendly, and open environments. And we're going to be introducing the virtual and augmented reality tools that interior designers use to be able to um, convey an idea and bring an idea to life so that they can pass it by their clients. And the benefit of using those virtual and augmented reality tools is that they don't have to spend the money building out an actual physical 3D model on the table like they used to. They can just, and it costs way less money and takes way less time to be able to build it in a virtual environment than in a physical environment like the architects and interior designers used to use. And the other additional benefit is that you don't have to paint a wall like 20 million times to make a client happy. You can just use like an augmented reality app or 
like Tinkercad or something to say, this is what it looks like in pink. This is what it looks like in blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it saves a lot of time and money. And that's kind of what tech is all about in here. And also, as you mentioned that I'm thinking it also, um, more people can see what they are proposing. Um, yeah. the, everyone, like you, you're talking about the, um, the models on the table that they would normally build and would have to come there. They can share it with anybody. Everyone yeah. doesn't have to physically come to some office um, to see what it is. It can be shared farther across um, um, the company or the organization or whoever is um, stakeholders involved in uh, what they're proposing to build. And instead of saying, there's going to be a couch over here and there's going to be a jukebox over here, you'll actually look at it. You can drop them right in there, yep. <laughs> and so there's kind of a lot to learning <coughs> what this is all about. So in order to give these students kind of a feel for what it's actually like to be an interior designer, um, I broke this down into four those four different modules. And this little page is a preview of what you're going to do to build your way up to um, working through the interior design process and learning what it would be like to be an actual interior designer. And so the design building blocks actually pulls directly from the original curriculum so that you'll learn what color schemes look like, what it, why you shouldn't pair different wallpapers with a chair that looks exactly like it because you'll freak people out, and <laughs> different ways that you can use patterns to kind of make things pop. And so these are just little mini exercises to start playing with the basics of design itself. And in the original book, um, they use a exercise to design your own room. So you're welcome to do that if you want to just stick with the original. And But the way that I translate it over is to say, in the real world, design is actually not for you. You're actually meeting the needs of a client. So in the second section of it, I introduce the concept of the process of interior design and how you get to know and understand your client. And you start learning about empathizing with the needs of others. And you start, um, and I included some client briefs. So these client briefs are actually organizations that are working on problems that are related to these magical little problems up here. And people will be able to choose an organization that they like that resonates with them. And then they'll be able to kind of get to know the space that they're going to be working in, the needs of their client, and then they'll start designing it out. And I included in some different planning worksheets and some ways that they'll need to um, research the general problem area. Like one of them says that you need to use those sustainable materials and it's, you're going to be building an escape room so that you're going to be introducing the idea of climate change. So it's just kind of a, the client is using a fun way to introduce these concepts and now you're supposed to help them. And probably the best way to show what those client briefs look like is to open one. So this is all it is. So it's basically, normally when an interior designer goes to interview a client, this is the information they start to gather. They want to know what is your actual project? What is this all about? What are you doing? Which, what is your organization all about? What are your values? What do you care about? What's your brand? How can we reflect your brand and your design? So all that, it would take a quarter past forever for your students to be able to interview a fake client to get fake information about a fake company. So yeah. it's all together. <laughs> and so basically the students would be asked to review through these different client briefs and just pick the one that they like. And then they'll go through a mini exercise that asks them, what, why did you pick this one? How is this going to be something that you're going to enjoy doing in the long haul? And what is like, what actually makes this meaningful to you? 
and you're going to introduce the idea of ikigai and how you're going to find like a intersection between what the world needs, what you like, what you love to do, and what you can get paid for. And if you've ever seen that Gabriel Iglesias show on Netflix, he actually uses Ikigai in one of the episodes when he's teaching the students. It's kind of awesome. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so you'll kind of, you have the option of printing like an infographic that just shows what Ikigai looks like. If you don't already know, it looks like this. And there's about 8 million of them. You can just pick whatever you want. And that blurred it out. There we go. There we go, yeah. So it's just the, so the what the world needs is basically those problem areas, like we need better education, we need um, better infrastructure, so our cities are kind of going smooth. And we need to be able to take care of our aging population. Whatever the problem suits your needs, that's what the world needs. And then you kind of look at, well, what do I care about? What do I actually like about these problems? If I get a job doing this, like what's going to keep me motivated? Why would I like doing it? And then just because you like it doesn't always mean you're good at it, but you might be able to practice until you get there. And is this some, is what you like to do and the problem that you're facing, can you get paid for it? Or is it just a hobby, volunteer, or skill building exercise? And it doesn't really matter which one it is. It's just kind of your little meandering path to get what you want, where you want to go. And so this is sort of the framework of what Ikigai looks like. And this is what you'll start to introduce to students to kind of get them thinking about if I'm going to get a job and I'm going to spend all this time learning how to do it and learning how to get to where I want to go, I should probably like it. <laughs> a little bit. You know? So you're just going to be asking them to match up this little Ikigai infographic with the job that they're going to be choosing and start kind of a mini discussion about what that looks like. And they're going to be practicing like evaluating careers and positions for what they like. And then in your, the next module down after they've talked about, they've picked their client and they started brainstorming, then they'll start working through this room design brainstorming worksheet. And so they're going to start processing through and kind of reflecting back and figuring out, okay, I just read the goal, but I don't want to parrot it back. I want to start making notes about what that'll actually look like. And I want to refresh myself and who I'm actually trying to reach, who's going to be using my space. And now I'm going to start making design decisions. I just learned about color schemes in the first module. I learned about fabrics and patterns and materials. Now I'm going to start using that and I'm going to start trying to implement that for my client. And then I'm just going to do a quick sketch out of what this is going to look like. So it's a super simple worksheet, but it's just like a little planning guide for before you actually get into the tool. And then once they're done with this, they'll do like a any little mini research about my client really wants sustainable materials. I have no idea what those are. So I'm going to go do some Googling and find out what that is so I can make better decisions. And then or they'll be researching the actual problem itself so that their space actually reflects what they're doing. And then this is where we actually get into the fun augmented reality and virtual reality tools. Because whenever we try to teach technology, um, for the most part, people tend to try to put the technology tool first and then the problem last. But this is actually where it belongs. This is, we're gonna be using and implementing the technology tools toward the end or the middle. So the tools that I recommend for being able to build your prototype and design are either Tinkercad or Spatial.io. Tinkercad is, a lot of you have probably heard about it. It's a 3D design tool so that you can, it's basically like a drag and drop 3D design environment. This is the one I'm gonna demo. That's, you've probably almost definitely seen it before. 
but spatial.io is newer. Um, spatial is an, and this is actually a show that we've done on Encompass before with um, Chad. Mm -hmm. And so it's basically you're able to build a room, an art gallery, or a meeting space in virtual reality using an app. So you can pull these different 3D objects into your space and place them around wherever you want. So basically, you're designing a room. Mm -hmm. and yeah, if you're looking for that, the um, the spatial one we did, um, Amanda, um, it was actually last June, I was just looking it up in our archives, last June of last year. Um, I'm just trying to see here. Chad Marin, who's from um, St. Petersburg College in Florida, he, he's working a lot with this. And um, so if you just type in spatial, S-P-A-T-I-L, into our search archives, um, it'll come up and you can see the recording from when um, we had that show on. And if this is like an introductory spatial experience for both you and your students or just your students, then you can dig as deep as you want into it or you can get as detailed as you want into it. And if kids get curious about it, then it's a free app. They can do what they will with it, hopefully legal, but they'll be able to experiment and play around. So in Spatial, you can design even the walls themselves. You can design your entire element, your entire space and environment, or you can do like a prefab room like this and just place your furniture in the area that you want to. And you can even change like your wall colors and change whatever you want to about it. So it's really heavily customizable. You can do a lot with it. And they also have a lot of tutorials online and there's actually tutorials baked into the app itself. So you mm -hmm. can actually enter a room and it will tell you, there'll be little signs hanging around everywhere that says like, press this button in your controller to be able to move this across the room to download an object into the space, do this. So they actually built a room that teaches you how to use the room. And then they've also got the tutorials in there that'll show you basically how to set it up, how to load in content, and how to do what you need to do, but not how to sneeze. <laughs> oh, almost happened, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> yeah. It's just right there now. <laughs> All right. So, and this I would recommend for older students because, like, the Oculus Quest headset and some of the, and most of the VR headsets are only for 13 and up. And again, the recommended age range for this is 12 and up and can probably even be adapted younger. But younger students wouldn't be. <laughs> wouldn't be able to put on the headset. And there are VR headsets you can use with younger audiences, but compatibility with all these apps is, I never checked it, I don't know. <laughs> and so let me jump into Tinkercad and I'll show you what it would actually look like to design a room in Tinkercad, because it's really not as hard as you might think. All right, so I'm going to sign into my account. I'm signing in on my other screen, so if I don't remember my password right away, you won't see it. Hey, I remembered it first try. Okay, let's bring it over. So you'll see on this kind of test screen that there are actually are already a lot of um, pre-made 
designs and objects that you can already use. So I'm just going to click on this create new design to open up a, your playing field. If you've never actually been in Tinkercad before, this is kind of the platform that you're going to be building your 3D room on. And this is the, it's just the space you've got to work with. And I am not going to add notes to my design, though it could if I wanted to. I said, no, close it, don't do it. I bet it's actually behind the little panel. There we go. There was an X to close it, but the um, menu from WebEx was covering it. Mm. And so the easiest way to actually do this is to go into this drop down where it says basic shapes, and you can actually pull in pre made structures and scenery, and you can also pull in um, different objects. And there's also a section for it shouldn't be surprising, they have toilet paper in there now. Um, they also have furniture in one of these. <coughs> yeah, da, 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 I bet it's in there we go. So they have featured collections of furniture. So you can you can either build an open air room like this, or you can actually build the walls, like the four walls itself, by pulling in a rectangle. So you can pull in your rectangle, make it the size of the room that you actually have to work with. Nice. And then you'll hollow it out. So I'm going to copy this. Actually, I'll draw, grab this little hole here, place it where I need resize it and I'm going to offset it a little bit so that there is actually a wall then I'll pull this up and use this and now I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard so that I can position it in the way that I want it to be. And you can also use, you can get really specific with it by actually dragging and dropping this height marker and doing a specific height and width on it. And so this is more or less about the width of a wall. And then I'm going to hit the enter key. And we're going to group these together by using this little group button here. And then you just carved out your wall. So this would be kind of a way that you can demonstrate how to build. If you wanted to build a space that had multiple walls, you can also add in separate little walls along the side. You can build a corridor like this. You, but we're just going to stick with just a regular room. And then, as you probably already guessed, I'm going to jump into my featured collections and I'll start dragging and dropping to build out my room. And let's say that I want some little symmetry in here, so I'm going to put some chairs in here. And then we're going to add in a nice little bit of foliage. And then let's assume that I look through all of the furniture that's available in here and I couldn't find the piece of furniture that I was looking for. So you can also go into, and a lot of you have probably heard about this before too, but this is Thingiverse. So Thingiverse is a website that has a whole bunch of just pre-made 3D objects that you can grab. If you've ever used a 3D printer, you've probably downloaded something from Thingiverse to be able to print on the 3D printer. So let's say that I'm looking for a couch. I'm going to search for couch on here. And then I'll grab this here. 
And even if it says dollhouse, it really doesn't matter in the virtual world because you can resize it. It can be it can be fitted for an 18 inch American Girl doll, but you can still stretch it in Tinkercad to be able to expand it to real human size. And I'm going to go into Thing Files. And when I came in here, I decided that I wanted a love seat. So I'm going to download this love seat. And then I'll jump back into uh, Tinkercad, too many tabs open. <laughs> then I'll import. And I'm going to choose that file that I just downloaded which is that two seat dollhouse love seat. And then I'll import it. Wait for it to get done. It's thinking about it. Hmm. And here's our couch. Wow. And so now I will scale this. It's going to be bigger. And let's say that I want some more leg room on here because this is going to be for a taller person. And I really hate that color tan. I actually don't really care about it, but I'm going to go into this solid and we're going to change it to a blue. Actually, the chairs are blue. Let's make her green. The people you're doing this for, your clients or whoever, are going to have opinions <laughs> on the colors. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And I did put specifications in some of the client briefs that one of them is a hippie and hates the color red because it makes his dog angry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay. Sure. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> and so we're just going to place this where we want it to be. And we're just building out our prototype on here. And let's say that we want a little stool or an ottoman in front. And we don't like this to be oriented in that way because no one would actually want to put their feet up in on a corner. So we'll just kind of rotate her around there. And I just duplicated it using the shortcuts on my keyboard. So I just did a control C to copy and a control V to paste. And now we have one for each side. And we're going to change this so that it has a semi complementary color. And then you'd want to fill up the rest of your space here. And you just kind of read through your client brief to find out what they actually want. And so this is just the basic idea of what you want to do to build out your prototype. And you can make this as complicated or as easy as you want to. And then you can start doing like little fake reviews so that the student has to um, communicate their design to your fake client. In this case, the client could be a teacher or another um, a faculty member that's brought in just for the review process, or even just anyone that you can grab to pull in to be a fake client. And then they'll give feedback to the student, and you can either do a revision process, or you can do a just ask them to make notes on what you would need to change to make the design happen. And I just realized that I made this Christmas colors because it's green and red. So I'm going to make this. Uh, let's do a light gray. And that's how you can start to see just the impact that the wall color will actually have on mm -hmm. your room. Mm -hmm. And so you can start kind of playing around with that and just see what you would look what it would look like from different angles. And to change the angle on here, I press the right key on my mouse. And when I drag the mouse around, you can look at it from different angles. Yeah. It won't really make a difference to look at it from here, but you can even look, look at it from underneath if you want to. 
And if your students are already used to using like Blender or some other tool to be able to create their own 3D objects, definitely do that. Use the tool that you like. But I just use Tinkercad because it has all of it right there. And it's super easy to use. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. It's very slick. Have, I think you've done something with, this looks for sim familiar to me. You've done something with Tinkercad before for us, I think. I probably did. Um, Do I remember what or when? <laughs> Not even a little. <laughs> I've used it a lot for like training classes and for mm -hmm. other stuff. So it all that kind of blends together. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make this purple. There we go. Now I'm just fiddling with it. And I somehow got a random rip over here. Delete. <laughs> All right, so now oh. let's pop. <laughs> I'll pop back into, go through the last little mini module of, and there's, this will all have like steps in the lesson plan. So if you're trying to follow this through, it's easier to just go through this than try to remember everything I'm saying right now. And there's also more details into this than <laughs> anything else. And then they'll just be asked to look at a problem that is facing their community just out in the real world. And they'll be either be asked what kind of career they would want to do to help support solving that problem, or they'll be asked um, how a virtual or augmented reality tool could possibly help solve those problems that are right next to them. So that's just the last module in here, which is reflecting on what those careers will look like and how you can use those tools to do some decent stuff. Mm -hmm. And oops, I haven't added that yet, but I will. And so now let me jump into the other tools that you can use. So if you are exploring different augmented reality, <coughs> I tried not to cough directly into the microphone. It's all right, you're <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> so if you've been looking at the virtual reality and augmented reality pages on the high tech pages of the Library Commission, you may have seen a few of these already but I just found some new ones more recently. So these are the ones that I found since then. Um, so this top one is actually one that I really like and is now downloaded onto my phone right now. It's um, Halo AR, and it is a way that you can make your own augmented reality app. Basically, like basically what you would do is you download the app onto your phone and then you would point your phone camera to whatever you want to be able to turn into an augmented reality object. You would take a picture of that object, then you would load in another picture or a sound bite or a video that you want to overlay onto that object, and then you would place it where you want, and the app just does it for you. So it is one of the easiest, quickest ways to be able to build your own augmented reality app. And then you would just open it up and whenever your camera recognizes that object, it'll overlay that picture or whatever you wanted to appear onto it. So you can make augmented reality books, you can make augmented reality posters, you can make augmented reality whatever you want. And all you have to do is download that app, take a picture, load in the thing you want and do it. Even if it is an animated giraffe, because he's <laughs> delightful. And then let me go into, I'm going to close this so I don't have a million tabs open. Um, I already talked about Spatial and I talked about Tinkercad, but one of the new things from Tinkercad is that if you have an iPad, you can now use Tinkercad with augmented reality support. And I'm hoping against hope that they decide to support Android pretty soon because I have an Android but it'll let you design an object in Tinkercad and then it has like an automated tool so that you can pop it out into the real world using augmented reality. 
So similar to how that Halo app, you take a, you basically frame up where you want your digital object to appear in the real world, and then the Tinkercad app will place it where you tell it to go. So you can build your thing and then put it out into the real world. And then SketchUp is another 3D design software. It works sort of like Tinkercad, but it's kind of, it's, it's one of those open source softwares. So it's like on steroids can do a lot of different things. And then the VR Sketch is an extension to SketchUp so that if you were to design a 3D environment in SketchUp, you could then push it out into virtual reality. So if you have like an Oculus headset, you would use VR Sketch to turn your design into an actual environment that you can explore using your virtual reality headset. And then, so the Merge Cube is actually one of the things that we have with the Tech Kits of the Mail. So this is like a little augmented reality cube that has like a whole bunch of different apps. And the Merge Cube sort of looks like the Borg Cube. You may have seen it before. It kind of took schools by storm a few years ago and is still around everywhere. But so this is what the Cube looks like when you're just holding it. But when you're holding your phone in front of it, this is what you would actually see on your phone. You can turn the cube into a galaxy, you can turn it into terrain, you can build a little world on top of it, you can turn it into a globe, a city, or whatever you want to. So unfortunately now the software that goes with Merge is a paid sub monthly subscription software. And I think they also have an annual plan. So if you plan to use Merge a lot, I would recommend getting that subscription that has like a whole bunch of pre-made lesson plans and pre-made apps. But if you don't want to use that, and you can also use the free apps that can be downloaded onto um, your, just on your phone. So then you'd be able to open up the app on your phone, hold it over the cube. When your camera registers the cube itself, it'll convert it digitally into whatever object you want. And you can also use stuff like Object Viewer to kind of make your own design and augment it onto the cube itself. And luckily with like with that Halo AR, you could actually take a picture of that cube itself and start augmenting things onto each side of the cube for free without even having to do anything. And so if you were looking for other ways that you could use the merge cube and you didn't want to do the and you were interested more in the virtual reality and design side of things instead of just sticking to the cube there is a service called cospaces <coughs> pause to cough um so cospaces is an augmented reality and virtual reality design space you can design things using basically like a drag and drop thing, just like Tinkercad, but they also made it so that you can code it using a drag and drop block interface, just like um, like the same way that you can program a lot of robots right now and or program Scratch or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you'd be able to animate different things and make things kind of like, make that rocket shoot up into the sky, or you can you can make it like, go up for three meters, turn right and go. So that you have a weird rocket that's turning on like a 45 angle. Maybe it malfunction, I don't know. And, but, so the reason I connect Cospaces with Merge Cube is that Cospaces has the Merge Cube add-on. And so you can actually design for Cospace, design for Merge Cube using your Cospaces account if you do like the little mini add-on thing. And I can't remember how much it is a month, but it's not a whole lot. So if you already are using the Cospaces environment a lot, or if you're working with like a, if you're working together with other libraries and want to be able to get that subscription and share it, then you mm -hmm. can also try that. Yeah. 
And because oh, other YouTube, it's so it's so cool. <laughs> it is awesome. And so let and you can also check it out through the you can check out the cube itself from the library commission. So if you want to test it out, then let me know. You can reserve the kit and then I'll mail it out to you. And right, so that's have, one of our tech kits that we have then yeah. that awesome. Oh great, yeah. Especially since this one does have that cost involved eventually. Oh. Good idea to take, you know, do a test drive first. Yeah. And so this so there are 15 of these and you can also check out the oculus quest 2 headset so if you wanted to experiment with virtual reality you can check out um i have 12 of these headsets themselves right now um i no longer do the oculus quest since the quest 2 came out mm -hmm. and i just upgraded all my all these versions to this one nice. And so you can play around with virtual reality or augmented reality. And you can also use the, you can also play around with drones or robots or whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. And this is just a list of them that if you want to see the whole list all in one spot, this is just a list of everything. And so let me go back in here. And Oh, I guess I should probably put this link in the chat too if you wanted to see it. Mm. Uh, chat. Tech kits through the mail. There. So that is in the chat now if you want to see it. And. So if you want to get more advanced into the design, you can also use Unity. Um, Unity, they have, this is actually the tool that professionals use, and they also have an education edition. They've got pretty much everything. So if you want to be able to build a professional environment using beginner to intermediate to advanced tutorials, then Unity is the way to go. You can either pull in 3D objects that you downloaded from like Thingiverse or another, or that you even created in Tinkercad, or you can go create stuff in like Blender or create stuff in another 3D design software and pull it into Unity. Uh, one thing I forgot to put on here was A-Frame. Um, A-Frame uses the, like an HTML, CSS style coding to be able to code for uh, virtual and augmented reality environments. And so A-Frame, A-Frame is used professionally in some places, but Unity is probably more widely used. Hmm. And, but if you're already familiar with HTML, CSS, you'll pick this up pretty quickly. And so let me go over into, and I also included a link to the best AR apps from Tom's Guide, just because uh, Tom already had them all together. Why should I rewrite them? No need to reinvent the wheel, absolutely. <laughs> and then, so now I said that I would say some different ways that VR has been impacting industries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I'll just remind everybody, because people have been pretty quiet who's been watching today, if you do have any questions or comments or thoughts or you want to have um, Amanda show you something else in any of these that she's been showing, go ahead and type into your questions section of your GoToWebinar interface and um, we can um, dig deeper into any parts of what she's sharing with us today. And so first I'll go into... <laughs> So the Virtual Reality Society kind of has a um, information thing about the industries that have been impacted the most and a list of general applications. Uh, the problem with this is that it's pretty, like some of it is kind of generic. Like what is what do you do with weather forecasting? What do you do with data analysis? What do you do with visualizations, whatever? So you can use these um, mini profiles, and I lost my tab for a second, to, to these all link to specific articles about 
how like the details of how the industry has been impacted. So starting with real estate, you can jump over to um, News, Channel, News Channel Nebraska. And if you're using these mini profiles with students, you can either free read this and start a discussion about it, or you can ask students to read it and then start a discussion about it this way. And you'll find out how the pandemic impacted the real estate industry where no one was able to go out and actually look at the physical place. So they started using virtual reality so that they could, um, real estate people could provide the experience of walking through a unit without actually physically walking through a unit. And more and more of these places are actually doing this. And I found this one specifically in Nebraska because most people have told me that, well, maybe they're doing that in New York, but they're not doing it here. And then I go, <laughs> but they are. <laughs> and you know. You'd be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think this would also be good for people. Um, uh, you were saying just because of the pandemic, people didn't want to go and, you know, go into houses yeah. together. Um, people moving long distances. Uh, you yeah. want to see the house that you might be potentially purchasing or renting or whatever, and you're you're not you're not going to travel just to do that. If you're you know going halfway across the country, all the way across the country, um, you you got to just trust what you're going yeah. into. Yeah. Um, I know I would appreciate that when I moved here from New York. Um, oh, it's been 20 years now. I didn't have a clue what I'd be looking at, and um, yeah. you had pictures sometimes. But that's not the same, necessarily, you know, as sit standing right in the place or virtual reality standing in the yeah. place. So yeah, I think that'd be very useful for anyone who's, you know, relocating, yeah. looking for a place. And like it says in the article too, like I remember when my brother was looking for his house that was years ago now, um, he had to spend like an entire weekend just visiting place after place after place and most of them he wasn't even vaguely interested in but like this like the carafici vr studio says you can look at about mm -hmm. 20 different homes and it'll only take like 10 minutes yeah so you just spend you just wasted way less time you didn't have to take off work you didn't have to traipse halfway around the town just to find that one thing that you actually want to devote more time to mm -hmm. and it just it's changing the way you do it mm -hmm. and they also so i mentioned that in the tech kits you can check out a drone and you can also see how they're using 4k drone video footage to start enhancing this and put it all together so you can start experimenting with how these multiple different technologies are playing off of each other to create these new innovations and start digging into this and then check out something and just play around with it yourself <laughs> and hopefully not cough and so let me go into so my other kind of um, favorite experience is that when you do use a virtual reality headset, um, one of the most popular experiences is to go inside of a cell and kind of see what like the inside of a cell actually looks like. And so you can start extending those medical based experiences that you ask students to go through and start pointing them over to how this is used in real life. So this is surgical theater. And it's showing the heavily detailed way that they're using virtual reality to explore the inside of the brain before a surgery. So the doctor is able to get a really good solid feel for where all the veins are and where everything is and map everything out before he even gets in there. And that's been reducing accidents and reducing the time that it actually takes to navigate through once the person is cut open. And it, you can start opening up discussions about that and find out different ways that this stuff is being used and find out how robotics and virtual reality has been playing off of each other to start to work together and start to change careers, impact careers, and kind of change the level of technology that people need to know when they actually get into these different 
careers and career pathways. Can I say careers one more time? <laughs> careers. And so let me jump into, so we are an agriculture state. I think it's Nebraska. I think agriculture is our number five industry now. And so this digs into how virtual reality is being used in farms. And then this other one talks about how virtual reality is being used in a tractor safety training program. Yeah, nice. And and the virtual reality is not just used in training for safety in farming or agriculture. It's being used in manufacturing and being used in uh, pretty much everywhere. So, and they've also used it for aviation and flight simulations so that it saves um, time, money, and pretty much lives. Because if you crash in a virtual plane, you don't get as dead. And it's just nice to be able to practice those kind of things before you actually get into them. And so these will actually link over to more of the details about how these were developed, what it actually looks like, and kind of the partnerships and cooperation that actually had to happen to make this thing a reality. And so this one was actually from a, it was born out of a university, but there are other ones that were actually born out of either um, the business itself or just people that were interested in it. Mm. So you don't actually have to be part of a university to be able to build a lot of this stuff. And because this, like this architecture firm, they're not affiliated with the university so far as I know. Um, I don't know them. Maybe they know somebody, but who knows? <laughs> but you can also look at how like architecture is one of the first industries that was impacted by virtual and augmented reality. And it's been saving time, money, energy, just like we talked about in the interior design lesson plan the same way that students just learned how augmented virtual reality saved money in for interior design is the way that it's working for architecture. Because you, you used to have to build that full on 3D model to be able to visually see and communicate with the client what your whole thing is going to look like. But now this, this is not a, like a virtual reality headset. This is actually a Microsoft HoloLens and HoloLens is used for augmented reality. Mm. So he is only seeing this in this little device. Mm -hmm. This is not actually physically there. This right. is augmented on top of an empty white table. And everyone who wants to see that will have to wear, would be wearing one of those too, anyone yeah. else? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, we do have a question, uh, a couple of questions that came in um, that I wanna grab here while um, before we, go any further here um yeah. i have a question about what is your favorite part of using vr with regards to library programming um and then there's a second part of this question which i think at the beginning maybe you answered but would you recommend this more for adult or children's programming now, i know you said your lesson plans were for 12th and up so and what, so what, i think favorite part of using it with regards to library programming what do you think about that so it also saves libraries time and money because one of the biggest things in libraries recently has been scavenger hunts and yeah. building out different ways that you can interact with the library without having to physically touch everything or interact with the library without having to go to the library. Mm. And now they're developing new ways that you can explore different collections so I just went to a conference earlier today and they were talking about how a library converted their entire Native American collection into a virtual reality exhibit. Wow. So they were reaching more people when extending the reach of their collection because you can now interact with the entire thing through a headset in your house. And you can also create more different scavenger hunt abilities without investing in the material cost by using something like that Halo AR app to start building out an augmented reality scavenger hunt in your library. And you can also build more experiences and rotate more experiences because you're only investing in an app that's free instead of investing in all the materials that you would actually use to put it together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
And so that's probably one of my favorite things. But it mm -hmm. also, my secondary favorite thing is the way that you can use virtual reality to help people gain exposure and gain access to those tools that they wouldn't have been able to gain access to otherwise. Mm -hmm. Because if you were to have a small business or a local real estate person come into your library, they may not have known that this real estate thing ever existed or they may have looked at it but thought I, that's not something I can do and I don't have access to these tools I can't e experiment with this but if they find out that they can experiment with it without investing the time and energy into it and getting access to the tools through the library the library then, absolutely yeah. yeah then it expands what they're able to do in their business mm -hmm. and what was the other question um, well, the second, other one was, what, would you recommend this more for adult or children's programming? Children over 13, just because of the age requirement of some of the bigger headsets. But if you oh, find right. a headset that you can use with younger students, like the, I have a love-hate relationship with Google Cardboard. The first time I used it, I put it up to my head and I was like, eh. <laughs> I had already I had already used the Oculus Quest, and once you go Quest, you never go back. And so it was like, I don't know. It's still awesome. It's just, it's an introductory tool. But I think just purely because my experience is more with adults, I personally prefer it with adults. If your experience is primarily with kids, you're going to like it with kids. You're going to mm -hmm. be more comfortable with the audience and you're mm -hmm. going to be more comfortable with the environment and building up skills from the children's perspective. But it'll work with either. It can yeah, work with it'll either. work yeah. with either. And on the, yeah, their age. And you said earlier your your lesson plans are for that 12 and up. And But depending on you, you also know the children that you work with, there may be some slightly younger ones that will be able to work with these pro the, um yeah software but I hadn't even thought about what you said the physical equipment they might need to use that's an age consideration too yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. um something that i thought about with library programming that what you remind me of when you talk about scavenger hunts is um like library instruction i know there are some libraries i know of over the that have done um kind of a scavenger hunt in the library to teach the kids like in a school library how to use the library where the different <laughs> things are um, where, you know, how they, and so they have to, you know, do that, which mm -hmm. is a great thing, but use doing it this way with a virtual reality. So like you said, they don't have to touch everything or they can learn about it before they come to the library even, yeah. you know, and, you know, do their own thing. And then when they come in and are actually there, they know, oh, I know where I, I, I went through this when I was at home on my, yeah. And one thing I actually thought about when we were running around the state doing that training for all the makerspace stuff mm -hmm. is it would actually be really easy to build an app that will train how to use the maker, like the 3D printer and how to use the laser cutter. But it just never happened. <laughs> and, you know, it takes yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Somebody could come up with that. Yeah. 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 No. And it would actually be super easy to do. And you, then you wouldn't have to send people around to like, it would kind of ease the burden of training mm -hmm. on a lot of your staff. Because most libraries, they said that they wouldn't be able to adopt a makerspace because they didn't have access to the um, right staffing or like mm -hmm. a background knowledge to be able to train all those machines. But if it was built into an app and all you had to do was hold up in your phone, and then it would give you step-by-step -step instructions for what you had to do. And you can hold up your phone if you needed like a refresher of how to use like what one little part was. Right, um, while you're when you finally get to touch the actual piece of equipment yeah. and you forgot something, yeah, just grab yeah. your phone and say, hang on, let me, oh, yeah. there. <laughs> it's like, I remember, I remembered that. <laughs> you know? And that would be so that's another, <laughs> you know. And were there any other questions that popped in? 
Uh, no, not yet. If anybody does have any, um, I will mention as I do almost every week here, um, we are a little after 11 o'clock, but that's okay. Um, we will go as long as it takes for Amanda to finish up what um, she has in her presentation. And if you all do have any questions, um, we'll answer any of them you have. We won't close anything down, so we're done with all of that. But we, um, if you do have to leave or if you did already leave um, because you only allotted an hour for today's show, we're recording as you can always go back and watch um, anything you miss later too. And I just realized that I forgot to put my questions and contact on this one. So I'm just going to copy and paste it in here. Yeah, no problem. There we go. And I didn't come up with a really cool fancy background for this one. <laughs> but so this one is just going to be pink. <laughs> And so if you want to dig deeper into how these are used across industries, you can click through and start reading how these tools are being used either in Nebraska or around the world. Sure. And then you can also, I also linked over to the Virtual Reality Society so that you can start exploring around different applications and click through to how this is used, how it's made, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. And the only other thing that I will add on here that I forgot to do are these pages here. So if you want to learn more about what this tech looks like, you can also learn it here. So you can learn about virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, um, robotics, Internet of Things, everything there, and it's linked now. Cool. And so I'll leave it at that. If there are any other questions, you know where to find me, or I'll be sitting here for a minute if you think of anything right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, please do uh, type in any questions you have if you want to ask anything right now before we wrap things up or as we are. Um, as I said at the beginning of this, this is definitely I thought would be a fun session to see how you can play with all the software and, and do, you know, you can get down a rabbit hole of like designing rooms and things, especially when I think, and especially when they give you all of those pieces, you know, grab a chair, grab a table, grab a couch, <laughs> um, that, that can be very useful. Um, and something I was going to mention at that point too, but kind of just went on to other things. Uh, if you are lucky enough to be um, getting a new library, designing a new library, floor plans, or an addition, or adding a computer lab, that's like a, it could be used for that as well for just your own, you know, your own use. You know, I want to figure out what can I fit into this new library, what can I fit into this addition that's going to be our makerspace room or whatever. Um, that is something that you could definitely use. You know, you know, you get architecture firms to design your building sometimes, but you want to, as the library director, or library staff, let's do it ourselves and see what we think, how we think it should work, could look, and what would we like, um, and that would be something I think very useful for you as um, staff at the library. You could even put out a challenge to the community to redesign the library. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, yeah. Kind what would your, yeah, similar to doing a survey of like what services would you like us to have? Do you think we could rearrange our furniture better? Here's a way you can just, you know, do it yourself with this software and send us what you or your ideas were and we'll, yeah, get fresh eyes on things. That'd be fun. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that actually would be kind of awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't see any other questions that came in. Nobody, no other questions came in while we were chatting. So that's fine. Um, you all know where to find Amanda here at the Library Commission, and her, you know, her contact info is in her slides always as well. Um, so I think we will wrap it up today. Do you want to send me the link for your slides too, yeah. so that I can, yeah, we can get that out to everybody. And, and it will be linked from the archive page too. So. So I'll put it in the chat and then you can grab it. Yep. So let me 
click on that there. Cool, looks good. Making sure I have the link too for my own use later. <laughs> All right, I am going to find the right thing. I think here, there we go. Pull back presenter control to my computer here. There we go. And there it is, the slides that I have, I have linked to now. Um, and we'll wrap things up. So thank you so much, Amanda. Um, this was, I said, this was a lot of fun. I'm going to go play with some things now, I think, <laughs> whether I need them or not. Um, that Halo AR app is addictive, I warn you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Here is our English live page. So yes, thank you so much everybody for being here with us today. Thank you, Amanda. I hope you start feel. I hope you feel better soon. Um, Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> you, you did. You did good. You did pretty well. Did not have too much uh, uh, coughing, but I'm sure that tea or whatever you have in your mug there is helping. <laughs> it is a necessary thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, I'll show you here on our Encompass Live page. Uh, if you use your search engine of choice and just search for Encompass Live, we're the only thing called that on the internet. Nobody else can use it. Um, this is our main page with our upcoming shows, but a link to our archives is right below. Um, most recent shows at the top. Uh, today's show will be there. Should be by the end of the day today. The end of the day tomorrow at the latest i'll have everything processed and, and loaded up here um everyone who um, attended today and registered registered for today's show get an email from me letting you know when it's available we'll also push out on her various social media we do have a um facebook page for encompass live where we um, post things here's a reminder for today's show um i think i had a yeah. i don't know um where's one from last week there you go the recording of last week that's from yesterday last week's show the recording is available so um we will have that out there we also do twitter and instagram um using the hashtag and come live abbreviation for us uh while we're here on the archive page also so if you like to use facebook give us a like there you'll get notifications or just look for our hashtag out there um while we're here on the archive page i'll also show you you can search or show archives and this is how i look for that spatial one um, there is free, pretty sweet text, spatial for uh, librarians, a 3D meeting space from last summer. So there's the recording from that. And there's Chad. Hi, Chad. <laughs> um, so you can search our show archives if you want to. You can do the whole show archives um, or just the most recent 12 months if you want something very current. That is because this is our full archives, and I'm not going to scroll all the way down. If you look over here, the scroll bar, it's Pretty huge. This is our full show archives going back to when Encompass Live premiered, which was in January 2009. So we're going on like 12, 13 years worth of, of shows here. Um, as long as we have some place to host them right now, all of our, our recordings are on YouTube. We will always keep them out there. Um, we're librarians. We archive things, keep things for historical purposes. So they'll always be available. Um, so do pay attention when you're watching an our archive show to the original broadcast date. Uh, many shows will stand the test of time and still be good current, good useful information but some things will become old outdated um, information may become wrong or have changed drastically services and products may have changed or no longer exist links may be broken etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, so just pay attention to that if you are watching any of our archive shows uh, so that'll wrap up for today. Uh, um, these are our upcoming shows for April. I've got some May dates I'm getting confirmed right now too, so you'll see those get added. Amanda will be back with us at the end of April, as I said, last Wednesday of April, to do talk about the 40-day challenge initiative um, with Brian Pitchman, who will be coming to join us again. He's been with us many times over the years. i uh, talk about a new uh, strategy he's going to be doing so sign up for amanda's next show if you like to and next week we are talking about expanding the health information landscape in your public library um melanie newell and kimberly rothgab are both librarians from here in nebraska who are going to be talking about the catalyst for community health program that was part of an imls grant for the university of missouri columbia and so about um you're interested in trying to provide good health information to, um, to your patrons of your library um definitely sign up for next week's show so thank you everybody for being here thanks amanda go take a break 
take care of yourself <laughs> and we'll hopefully see you all <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.